Hello, uh, in this video, uh, I will discuss some properties of the expenditure function. Uh, in the previous video, we, we just talk about uh, how to derive the expenditure function by using the expenditure minimization program or by utilizing the uh, indirect utility function. And uh, in, in, in that video, uh, we use the Cobb Douglas utility function u equals uh, x1 times x2 and we derive the expenditure function uh, as e p u bar is 2 times uh, u bar 1 over 2 p1 1, 1 over 2 p2 1 over 2 so now uh, now let us discuss some properties of this uh, expenditure function uh, by taking uh, an example of this function uh, but this these properties will be uh, applicable to other expenditure function too so the first property is the expenditure function is a continuous function uh, since the utility function is continuous uh, the expenditure function in this case is continuous the second property is the expenditure function is strictly increasing in u uh, what what this implies is that to to get a higher level of utility the minimum level of expenditure needed must increase that is del e over del u bar is greater than zero so the derivative here is uh, the partial derivative here is p1 1 over 2 p2 1 over 2 times u bar negative 1 over 2 and this value is greater than zero now let us let us go to the third property the third property is related with the, the third property is related with the effect of change in prices and it says that uh, it says that the expenditure function is uh, uh, increasing function increasing uh, increasing function of prices so our expenditure function EPU bar was uh, 2 times U bar 1 over 2 P1 1 over 2 P2 1 over 2 so what this means is that the, the partial derivative of uh, E with respect to PI that is p1 or p2 uh, must be greater than zero so let us calculate the derivative with respect to p1 so this is simply uh, u bar over 1 by 2 p2 over 1 by 2 times 1 over 2 p1 negative 1 over 2 which is p1 negative 1 over 2 2 and 2 cancels so we see that P1, P2, and U bar cannot be negative. So, what what this implies intuitively is that when the when the commodity becomes expensive, when the commodity first commodity becomes expensive, the minimum level of expenditure needed to obtain the utility level U bar uh, increases. other things remaining the constraint so the fourth the fourth property is it is homogeneous of degree one in prices so homogeneous of homogeneous of degree one in prices So what does uh, this imply? Intuitively, it says that when P1 and P2 uh, double the minimum expenditure uh, to, to get the utility U bar must double. So uh, this seems logical because when both commodities uh, become uh, expensive the minimum expenditure must uh, go up and in fact 
uh, the minimum expenditure must go in the same go up in the same ratio as the prices of the commodities so if p1 and p2 uh, increase by 100 percent the minimum expenditure to obtain the target utility will go up by 100 percent so by using this example we can show that this is homogeneous of degree one for this uh, let us simply let us simply increase or multiply p1 and p2 sorry this is not our expenditure function uh, our expenditure function is this one so now simply let us uh, let us uh, multiply p1 and p2 by a lambda so this is uh, this becomes lambda uh, over 1 by 2 sorry lambda power 1 by 2 p1 power 1 by 2 and this becomes lambda power 1 by 2 and p2 power 1 by 2 so this is simply uh, the lambda can be so lambda 1 by 2 lambda 1 by 2 becomes lambda and this this can be written as lambda times uh, the original expenditure epu bar so what this says is that when p1 and p2 uh, they increase by lambda times the um, the initial expenditure also increases by lambda times uh, the the next property uh, the next property of the expenditure function is uh, related with the concavity this is fifth property concavity the the expenditure function epu bar it's concave in P. So, what this uh, <coughs> shows intuitively is that uh, if if the prices of the commodity, if prices of a commodity increases, the uh, expenditure, the expenditure to obtain the minimum level of utility sorry the minimum expenditure required to obtain the target utility cube bar uh, increases uh, by a smaller rate so the expenditure function uh, will look like this so this is epu bar so so this happens uh, because uh, because if the in with the increase in with uh, increase in the price of the first commodity the consumer simply substitutes the consumer simply substitutes uh, the x1 commodity by the relatively uh, less expensive commodity x2 so if the if the if the demand for x1 were to remain the same the expenditure function uh, would be a straight line so with the increase in the price of the first commodity if the demand for x would remain would remain the same means there is no substitution the expenditure function would be a straight line going upward so so this is called this is also called a pseudo expenditure line a pseudo expenditure line means imaginary expenditure line p s e u d o pseudo expenditure line so the expenditure does not increase as rapidly as the increase in prices simply because of the substitution effect as the price of the first commodity increases the consumer simply substitutes the x1 commodity by x2 as such the expenditure function becomes concave now the the last property of the expenditure function uh, is uh, the Seifer's lemma. So, this property of the expenditure function simply says that uh, 
uh, if we take the partial derivative if we take the partial derivative of the expenditure function with respect to price we simply get the equation demand function or the compensated demand function for that commodity so differentiating partially with respect to price gives us the exchange demand function so in this case our expenditure function is uh, in our example e uh, p u bar is simply uh, two times u bar 1 over 2 p 1 1 over 2 and p 2 1 over 2 uh, let us check whether Seifert's lemma is applicable or not so the partial derivative of our expenditure function with respect to p1 is simply uh, 2 u bar 1 over 2 uh, p2 1 over 2 this is 1 over 2 p1 negative 1 over 2 so this is simply u bar 1 over 2 p2 1 over 2 and p1 negative 1 over 2 so this is nothing but the but the Hickeysian demand function uh, we just derived a few minutes ago for the first commodity similarly we can derive the Hickeysian demand function for the second commodity by simply taking the partial derivative of the expenditure function with respect to p2 so the partial partial derivative of the expenditure function with respect to p2 in our case is simply 2 u bar 1 over 2 p1 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 p2 power 1 negative 1 over 2 so 2 cancels and the remaining thing is nothing but the Higgison demand function for the second commodity we just derived a few minutes ago so thus Seifert's lemma simply uh, shows us that the, the, the partial derivative of the expenditure function with respect to price gives us the uh, Higgsian demand function for that commodity. So thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel for watching more videos in the future. Mm -hmm.